for a thought today. Just a thought. Running on emptiness. Running on emptiness. I could just preach from that. Because a lot of folks are empty. And they've been running for a long time. And now they done ran out of stuff that they're running on empty. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna try to stick to my text a little bit this morning. See, I can't take and give you Elijah's whole life right. or what he has done. I can only encourage you to go back and read 1 Kings 17 to 19 and see for yourself how God has has truly blessed this individual how he was a prophet of God and verse in, in chapter 17 you'll find how the ravens just came in and fed him and, and as they fed him and during the drought the, the widow uh, was able to eat and how Elijah raised up the widow's son from the dead in verse 18, you find that in, in verse 18 that he was in a conflict with 850 pagans, uh, uh, prophets, and he called fire down from heaven. And he has such a passion for God that God just loved him and all his energy. But when we look here in chapter 19, and we begin to look into chapter 19, we find that there was something going on that was a little bit different than what we know this gentleman to be. Elijah was all pumped up for what he had just done by calling the fire down from heaven and slaying all the, all the Baal's prophets. He slayed them all with a sword. And as he slayed them all with a sword, he took off running. And they said he ran before Ahab can get to the castle he had ran and outran Ahab to get back to the castle. But as he got back, Ahab went and talked to his wife. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how some women are. <laughs> he went and talked to Jezebel. That as he was telling Jezebel how Abraham, uh, Ahab, Ahab was talking to Jezebel about what Elijah had done. And the more that he talked, the more angrier she was getting. See, when you look down in verse number two, it says, so let the gods do to me and more so, if I do not make your life as the life of the ones of them tomorrow by this time. Which, which means the only thing she was really saying is, uh, 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 you're a dead man. That's all she was really saying, it was you're a dead man. You, we're going to kill him by this time tomorrow. <laughs> and because she said that, he began, he got afraid. And when he got afraid, he began to run. Here's what happens sometimes. Some of us, are, are, are we get so caught up in doing God's work, and when God blesses us, Sometimes we forget about where God has bought us from. And it's funny because he just found out that Jezebel's gods didn't have any power over his gods. But yet fear sets in and he takes off running. Where he should have stopped and just begin to laugh when she says she's going to kill you by this time tomorrow. Well, if none of your prophets was able to do anything, your God wasn't able to do anything, why would he take and run from a woman who said they're going to kill her tomorrow? All right. All right. See, 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 the devil has one big hold over us. That's fear. All right. All right. And when fear seeks in, sometimes we forget who we are. Yes. And when we forget who we are, we figure we got to run because we done got scared. And we begin to not take, we took our eyes off of God yes. and put our eyes on the problem. Yes. Yes. And when we take our eyes off of God and put our eyes on the problem, 
fear is able to step in to make you run from where you already know you can win the battle. Too many times we take our eyes off of God. And we begin to look at our circumstances all around us. And it looks like we just can't make it through. It looks like we just can't do, we just can't make it. But we forget what God has already done. Yes. We forget how when we were lost and in the darkness and in the marrow, how God has picked us up and brought us out. We forget all the miracles that God has already put in our lives. Because when I look around the room, I see nothing but miracles. But sometimes we forget about the miracle and we look at the problem. Oh, yeah. 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 Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Because because he should he should be turning around and laughing at her. He should be turning around and chuckling at her because there's nothing she had on him that would actually stop him from doing what God has called him to do. But he takes off running. He takes off running in fear. And then oh, okay, okay. All right, I hear you, God. Y'all, 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 I'm gonna walk through this just a little bit if y'all don't mind. All right, all right. Okay. And, and as he takes off running, he he runs into Bathsheba, the town of Bathsheba outside of Judah, and, and and he do like we do. He's so caught up in fear. He takes his friend, his servant, the person who's been with him all his time during the good time, and leave him there. Because <laughs> y'all know when y'all going through something. Y'all want to be over here by yourself. That's right. That's right. Instead of trying to have somebody help you along the way, or maybe help pull you back to where you need to be, or maybe somebody open the scriptures up and begin to read, which you, you begin to run. All right. They said he ran and dropped his friend off <laughs> and left him there. It's <laughs> in uh, verse 3. He left him there and he took off running again. Now, this was a running person. <laughs> I mean, and, and when I say he was a running person, th- this guy, this guy, he was, he was, uh, 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 he was able to just run. And, and when I, when I, when I read this, I, I thought about Forrest Gump. <laughs> run, Forrest, run! And, and, and he was just running. And he said he ran and ran. And that as he ran, he ran to, he couldn't run any further. And when he couldn't run any further, he stopped. And then he ran a little bit further. <laughs> and he said he got to a certain tree. All right. And when he got to the tree, that he began to sit down and lay down. Well, well all right. All right. <laughs> he was tired. He was trying to get away. And as he was trying to get away, he just found a place that he was just going to stop. And then he did one thing that that really struck me in verse 4. He said he began to pray. It is enough. Lord, take my life. Here I am, a prophet of God. Here I am doing all kinds of miracles. I done ran myself to death. I done ran to to the point I'm on empty. I just keep on running. And yet, I get to, I think I done ran out of, um, got to the end of my rope. And now I'm praying that God will take my life. Take my life. I am no better than my father's. And as he said that, he went to sleep underneath the tree. And as he went to sleep underneath the tree, the angel of the Lord came and woke him up and said, eat. And he woke up and he began to eat. But see, see, even before I move on to that, you know, you know, I don't know about you, but I know some folks that I talk to, they've been running this race for so long that they are tired. And they sit there in a heartbeat and tell you in a minute, it might be just better if I take my own life. It might be better if I just die right now. That if I just die right now, then, then, then they don't have to worry about me no more. But here's a man of God praying the same prayer some of us might have prayed. That we done ran to the point that we can't run no more. And all because of a woman. <laughs> but, 
That Jezebel. <laughs> All she said was, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. You're going to be dead. And he takes off running. He ran, he ran for more than a whole day. All right, all right, let me. Let, let, thank you, Bishop. I'm, I'm glad you're with me. And, 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 and see, now, 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 the, 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 the angel came a second time and touched him and told him to eat because you have to eat because you're going on a journey. And when you're going on a journey, you need your strength to be able to make it. You got to get to this mountain because God needs you to be in a certain place at a certain time. Yeah. And the only way you're gonna get there is you gotta get your strength. Yeah. Here's what happens sometimes. We get burnt out. And because we get burnt out, we don't know how to get rest. Yeah, I'm preaching to myself now. We don't know how to get rest. We don't know how to stop and relax a little bit. Here God allowed him to get some sleep because he had another journey he had to go on. He had some more running he had to do. So it wasn't the point that, you know, I, I, I'm going to let you stay here, but you got to be in a certain place at a certain time that I need you to get there. Now the Bible actually says it took him 40 days and 40 nights to get to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Now the commentary said he could have got to the mountain a lot quicker, but because he didn't want to go the way God wanted to go, sometimes we want we wander aimlessly, and we and that's why we can't get what God has for us because we're too busy seeing other things and instead of going in the direct path where God can bless us. We stop here and we stop there. We look over here and we look over there. But God said, if we just do what He said, do. Yes, yes, yes. See, 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 see. So some of us, we so busy looking around and, and trying to see what we can see. But if we just stay focused on what God is calling us to do, the, uh, the comment said, He would have made it there a lot sooner than 40 days. He would have made it there a lot sooner. And when we stop and we look at each uh, I, I got to throw y'all in there. When I stop and start looking at some of y'all, some of y'all would have made it to Christ a lot sooner if you weren't listening to the people in the world. Because the people in the world say, you don't need to go to church. People in the world say, church is nothing but a crutch. People in the world say, none in the church but a bunch of hypocrites. But let me tell you something. I'd rather be with a bunch of hypocrites that's trying to get right than somebody in the world that's trying to kill me. Oh, y'all oh, don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. And then when he ran, I'm, on, I'm all the way down to verse 9 now. And when he ran, he got to the mountain. And when he got to the mountain, he went into the cave. And as he's in the cave, you know, the voice of the Lord came and said, What are you doing here? <laughs> now you know, like I know, if God asks you a question, Yep. He already knows the answer. Yes, right. <laughs> he just needs you to respond. Amen. And so when some of us get caught up and we get into our little depression and we don't want nobody to bother us and we go in our little room and we hide in that little corner, all of a sudden God steps in and you hear the voice say, what are you doing here? <laughs> you have to turn around and respond to that thing. Welcome to Grace and Mercy, where the pastor is Donald L. Watson. We would like to invite you to come out and join us for a Sunday school on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. and our worship service at 11 a.m. Monday evenings is our intercessory prayer service at 6 p.m. and immediately following at 7 p.m. is our HEAL program. If you're suffering from depression or struggling with some emotional distress, you might want to come out and join us for that HEAL program where we do a lot of soul searching. Wednesday is our Bible study at 7 p.m. and Friday's our Purpose Driven Life class. We ask if you call in advance if you need a ride to any of these events. We will gladly come and provide you transportation. Thank you for watching and God bless. When, when, you, when you get to the point where you're running on empty, <laughs> 
and you can't find any help anywhere. Listen, uh, listen, listen. You, you got to learn how to get in, into God's presence. That as you get into God's presence, God can now take and do something with you. Oh my God. He can now take and work with you. He can now take and lift you back up. He can now take and bring you back to life. He can now restore you. Oh my God. See, See, the devil has no hold on you. Amen, amen, amen. See, see, see. I, 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 I read, I read in the scriptures. The devil is like a roaring lion, seeking to look to steal, steal and destroy, kill, steal and destroy. But see now, now when you read a little deeper, they said a roaring lion is usually the older lion, and the older lion he only roars because he has no teeth. <laughs> And because he has no teeth, the only thing he's trying to do is scare you. Because if he could put fear into you, he got you already in, but she got you running in a direction that you shouldn't be running in. And as you begin to run in a direction you shouldn't be running in, now they might have some younger lions on the other side that got some teeth. The older lion scared you to run towards the younger lions so the younger lions could take and destroy you. But if you learn that the roar doesn't mean anything, and you realize that God is still in control. It don't matter what size the lion is. It don't matter what it looks like. I stand on the word of God. That as I stand on the word of God, the lion can roar all he wants to. God said, God said, God said, God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but I have given you of love and of a sound mind. So if I take that and I apply that to my life, when that fear begins to roll up on me, God said, I have not given you that. Oh my God. But I have given you love. Amen. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. Y'all don't, don't hear me. See, 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 see God. God is an awesome God. He is an awesome, awesome God. And, and, and I'm closing. I, I'm closing, y'all. I'm closing, y'all made me sweat. I'm closing. I'm closing, I'm closing. But as I get ready to close, there's a couple of questions I wrote down. And, 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 and as I wrote the question, I need you to take a look at it and you gotta answer it for yourself. See, the first question is, is actually, oh God, is actually found in 1 Kings 18 and 21. Mm -hmm. How long will you waver between two opinions? Uh-oh, amen. If God, if the Lord is God, mm -hmm. right. follow him. Yes. But if Baal, then follow him. Oh, yeah. See, 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 some folks, Still haven't figured that out yet. Right. Some folks still haven't figured out that God is all powerful yes. and right. all knowing. Yes. See, yes. see, even with Elijah running, Elijah could have ran anywhere he wanted to. But you can't get away from God. Amen. He said, if you make your bed in heaven, so. guess what? I'm there too. If you make your bed in hell, uh -huh. guess what? I'm there too. Right. So there's no way you can run and hide from God. See, sometimes we think we can hide. Sometimes we think we can get into our cave or we think we can go into our state of depression. But God said, I'm right there with you. And I'll turn right around and ask you a question. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? What are what are you doing here? God already knows the answer, but he needs you to respond because you're someplace, your mind is someplace where it should not be. So the question is, what are you doing here? So when you look at that, and God meets you right where you are, and that question you got to answer, what are you doing here? You got to stop and think about how did I get here? Yes. Why am I here? Yes. Was I did I come because I'm that down and I'm that depressed? Yeah. But yet when things are going good, I'm praising God. When things are going good, I'm tearing up the church. When things are going good, I got a testimony. But what happened when things don't go good? What happened when you when you ain't with God? You got to give him the praise all the time. You got to tear the church up all the time. It ain't 
ain't just when you feel good. Right. It ain't just when the music's playing. Yeah. If God has done something for you, you have to learn how to say, God, I thank you. And because I thank you, I'm going to praise you regardless of what it looks like. See, regardless of what it looks like. I may not have a job today. But that's all right. I, the doctor may gave me a bad report, but that's all right. Things may not look like it's going my way, but that's all right. Because I learned how to give God praise in a time. Oh my, oh, oh, my oh, my oh, my oh my God. 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 Uh, and I already asked you the second question. The second question was, what are you doing there? Uh -oh. Uh -oh, I like that. What are you doing there? See, see, some of us, God has your hands on you and he restored you. He brought you back into the fold. And because he brought you back, what are you doing for him? What are you doing for him? Are you witnessing for him? Are you inviting folks to church for him? What are you doing for God right now? See, see, he can have bench warmers all day long. You know, you know, you know, if you watch football, there's a whole lot of folks that just sit on the bench. They don't do anything. But God is looking for workers. God is looking for somebody who wants to come in and serve him. God is looking for somebody who wants to live for him and lift him up. The, oh my God. The, Y'all don't hear, yes. don't hear what I'm saying. Amen. Y'all don't hear. See, 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 oh. see, each one of us got a different calling. That's right. Y'all sit down. Y'all making me nervous. I'm done. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm done. Okay, y'all said amen. So y'all got y'all, y'all got to end. God has a calling for each one of us. We have to learn. Not to look at somebody else, Amen. but look at what is God is calling us to do. That's right. That's right. I may not be able to cook like you. I may not be able to sing like you. I may not be able to read like you. I may not be able to go out and witness like you. I may not be able to do a lot of things like you, but God made me me. And because he made me me, he loves me just the way I am, but he wants to take and make me go a little bit higher. He wants to take me and make me go a little bit further. So when I, when I say me, I'm talking about you. God wants to do something with you to make you grow a little bit more. If you're content of right where you are right now, God can't use you. You can't be content. You got to be looking for what God has in store for you. Because when you look for that, then you begin to work in that. And he says, oh my God. He says, as you begin to work and the calling, he goes, I will open doors for you that you would not even expect. I will make room for your gift. That even as I make room for your gift, you say, "Well, God, I, I don't know, I know, I don't know how to do nothing but type." Well, guess what? We sometimes we need somebody that knows how to type. We need somebody who knows how to work on a computer. We need somebody who's. Oh my God! This, 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 this one, this one is. is we need some friendly people on the door. All right, all right. We need some. We need some folks that we, we call greeters. That don't mind smiling. Don't mind welcoming somebody in the church. I ain't talking about those who got their shoes on too tight. <laughs> Because those who got their shoes on too tight, first of all, ain't smiling. Second of all, don't want to be standing there. Third of all, mad that they're standing at the door. <laughs> so there's different ministries for different folks. Amen. If you got bad legs, bad knees, and you know you can't be an usher. Because <laughs> you can't stand up. Oh, now I don't want to hear that. <laughs> God has a ministry and a place for each and every one. Okay. We just need to turn around and say, what am I good at? Whatever you're good at in the world, you could be good at here in, in, in the church. He's opening it up for you. God, I said, God, I need this, I need that, I need this. He said, look around your church. He said, when you look around your church, he goes, everything you need is right here. Everything you need is right here. It ain't all on me. Everything you need is right here. But that means 
Somebody got to step up to the plate. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Sister Paula may just make me laugh. That means somebody got to step up to the plate. And when you step up to the plate, then you want to go and do what God is calling you to do. Yes, you got to talk to me. Yes, you got to talk to the leadership of the church. Yes, it's got to all flow together. That as it flows together, the church grows together. And ain't no big eyes and little U's. We're all the same here. We're all the same. You know, and, and, and I, I love what God is doing. I love how God is blessed. You know, you know, even even Chris could have said, "No, I can't play the drums of that because the organ player ain't here." That ain't how the church is run. That is not how the church is run. We all have a job, but we all can do each other's job if we really wanted to, without stepping on each other's toes. We work together. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that you truly enjoyed whatever you might have seen or heard. And we ask so that you, if you're ever in the Middletown area, that you would stop by and come visit us. Or either that, send us an email, send us a letter. I have heard from some of you already of some of your requests. And you, we will pray with you and along with you. Um, at this time, I just want to go into a brief moment of prayer. Gracious Father, Lord, as we come before you, God, we come thanking and praising you for another day another hour. We thank you, O oh Father God, for those who are watching this broadcast today. We ask, O oh Lord God, you continue to touch those. There might be somebody who is sick and shut in today, God. We ask that you will bless them, O oh God. Give them the strength, O oh Lord God, of what they need, O oh Father. Father, somebody's thinking about suicide, O oh God. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you intervene with that, O oh Father God, that they don't commit suicide, O oh Father. Somebody's thinking about getting high. Somebody's thinking about taking a drug, O oh Father God. Somebody's in a state of depression today, God, that even even as they're in a state of depression, oh Lord God, they need you, oh Father, to help lift them out of that state of depression. We ask you now, God, to step in the midst, oh God. Send a word, oh Father God, that somebody will get pulled out. Somebody will get help, oh Lord God. Somebody will be delivered, oh God. Father, have your way this day, oh God. And God, we continue to give your name all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for watching our program today. If you're ever in the Middletown area, please stop by to visit us. Uh, Sunday school starts right at 9.30. We do have an anointed teacher who teaches Sunday school. And then we move right into our worship service, which starts at 11. Please come out, be a part. There's some information that'll be on your screen that if you need a ride, give the church a call. We'd be more than willing to come by and pick you up. I thank you for your emails. I thank you for your letters. I thank you for your phone calls. And if, please continue to call us, continue to send emails to us. We will pray with you and we will pray for you. Thank you. Have a blessed day.